Organic chemistry, hydrocarbons. Last time we looked at alkanes with single bonds, and this time we're going to be looking at alkenes with double bonds and then alkynes with triple bonds. And let's remember that these can come as straight chains or as ringed compounds. So let's proceed with some alkenes. These are compounds that contain a double bond, which would be right there. Any hydrocarbon containing a multibond is also known as an unsaturated hydrocarbon, so alkenes are unsaturated. There needs to be at least two carbons present in a molecule for a double bond to occur, meaning you can't have a double bond with a meth, methane, something like that. It's got one carbon, won't work. So our simplest one is going to look like that, two carbons bonded together, and uh, you can put the hydrogens on the ends as well once you've drawn your molecule. Notice that uh, we now have a, like a CH2 unit bonded to a CH2 unit. So our condensed formula looks a little different some, than some of the other condensed formulas. In fact, if you saw that condensed formula, you should say, well, that molecule probably has a multibond because there are fewer hydrogens than there should be. In terms of naming this one, it's got two carbons, so there is an eth involved, and since it's an alkene, we put an ene at the end. This is ethene. Well, what do you think about this one? It's got three carbons to it. So it must be a prop. And then uh, it's got a double bond right there, so it must be propene. So that is our second uh, simplest alkene. Now here's a little uh, challenge for you. I want you to draw butene. So if you're going to do this, butene has four, so four carbons, so you draw your chain of four, and you put your double bond probably in that first spot. And that's probably, if I had 30 people do it, probably 25 people would make that version, and there's nothing wrong with it. However, the other five people, there's the hydrogens. By the way, the other five people would do this, and they put their multi-bond in the middle, right there. Now, both answers are correct. Check mark, check mark, but they are clearly different. This molecule has a multi-bond right there, and obviously this one's in the middle. So, if we name those ones, they would both be butene, but we know they are different. So we need a system of coming up with how to tell them apart. Essentially what we need is we need a number, a number to tell us what bonding spot that multibond is in. So in the last section, we numbered our carbons, one, two, three, four. But what we're doing now is we are numbering the bonding spots. So this is gonna be number one bonding spot, that's the second bonding spot, that is the third bonding spot. So we have a multibond in the first bonding spot, making this one one butene. And if you look over here, that would be a two butene. We have two butene here. So we have made a discovery and uh, we've made uh, sort of a discovery in the isomer category. By the way, there is an alternate name for these. So the one, the number can go between the, uh, the ending and the prefix. So I should mention that because you'll see both versions coming up. I'm more partial to the number out front, but both are correct. What we've discovered is something called a positional isomer. So these are unsaturated hydrocarbons while the multibond can appear in different locations on the parent chain. Uh, and they cannot occur until butene. So back to, if you remember back to the propene we drew, there would only be uh, one way to do it because it would just kind of be flipped around. So it's in the one spot here, and if you flipped it around, you'd still have it in the one spot. You always want to go with the low, and that's going to be a rule coming up. We always want our multibond to be in the lowest position uh, num numerically we can. So these are, in fact, the same. Ergo, that one does not exist. We would call it propene. We would not call it one propene. So let's name and draw all positional isomers of hexene. So how many are we talking? We're talking six. So you can pause the video now and draw your attempts. Welcome back. Let's take a look at uh, what you might have drawn. So if you're going to do this, you'd probably lay out your six carbon chains like that, and you might try it again and again, and then you'd say, okay, back to the first one here. I'm going to put that multibond in the first spot. Boom, I have my first one. I've got one hexene. Move down to the second example. We're going to put it in the next spot. We're going to call that two hexene, and then we're going to jump up to that third one we drew. We're going to put it in the middle spot, and we're going to call it three hexene. 
And then we're going to say, does 4-hexene exist? And the answer is no, it doesn't, because it would just be 2-hexene flipped over, right? It would just be that one flipped over, and you always want, you want your number to be in the lowest possible. So 4-hexene would not exist. And there are all the hydrogens drawn in just to make it correct. Kids forget that. I don't know why. All right, so let's go ahead and name the following. Now we're going to do... Uh, it's not really a set of rules because it's just sort of one rule, rules for naming alkenes. We want to name the longest chain containing the multibond. Make the multibond have the lowest number possible. Okay? So longest chain that contains the multibond. Sometimes you can find a long chain. If the multibond's not in it, then that, uh, you got to go, you got to default back to this rule. So let's look at this one here. I'm thinking we're going to have our longest chain straight across. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be six. So this is some kind of hexene. And then I've jumped ahead here slightly. And I've numbered the uh, bonding spots as one, two. So we have a two hexene on the go. Now I'm not going to renumber the chain to get this substituent group the lowest number possible. I'm just going to kind of keep going here. And so we're going to go back and number our carbons. That was our first carbon. That's our second carbon. That's our third carbon. That is our fourth carbon. So we have a ethyl group on the fourth carbon. So this is a 4 ethyl hexene hextuene. So there you go. So there's our rule. We got our longest chain. We got the multibond to have the lowest value possible. And then we just named the rest of the groups that were there. Okay, so looking at our next example here, uh, you might, I, will, I think I'll draw your attention to here. We've got three carbons all squashed together. One, two, three. So if we draw our longest chain, or at least attempt to, we've got three, four, five, six. We actually have six carbons right there. Unfortunately, there's no multibond in that chain. So your next thought might be, okay, straight across, one, two, three, four, five. We've got the multibond, but I'm going to say, hang on a second here. Let's not forget we have three squashed together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We actually can get six carbons in a row and our multibond is contained there. So the multibond looks to be in the one spot. We're talking about a hex one ene. Now, what's left over here? Well, we've got two carbons and five hydrogens. That makes an ethyl group. What carbon are they on? Let's see, one, two, and three. So this chain is on the third carbon here. We're talking about a three dash ethyl hex one ene. Let's try another example. Oh no, we got a ring here. See this uh, contraption right there? That would be your multibond. Now, we want to get our multibond to have the lowest number possible. So we want to consider that, but we also want to consider where the substituent groups are. So there's always kind of two ways to name this. This has to be in the first bonding spot. That's, that means this corner carbon here has to be carbon one, and this one has to be carbon two, or vice versa. This could be carbon one, and this could be carbon two, and the subgroups are what's going to dictate what is actually proper. So it looks like the green version is going to be right because this will our, we'll have our subgroups on the third carbon. I guess if we numbered the other way around, that would be three, that would be four, that would be five there. So obviously three is lower than five. Okay, so this multibond is always in the one spot. We've got five carbons here. We're going to call this a cyclopentene. We're missing is the number one. That number one is not necessary because this is always in the one spot. So you don't need the one in front, in the middle, wherever. It doesn't belong. Once you've got that cyclopentene, that indicates there's a double bond, you just need to know that we've got a couple of propyl groups on the third carbon here. So a 3, comma 3 dipropyl. Ta-da. Well, that's only half the story. Alkynes. Triple bonds are what we're talking about now. And again, a multibond is unsaturated, so alkynes can also be considered unsaturated hydrocarbons. Um, there needs to be at least two carbons present in a molecule for a triple bond to occur. So the simplest alkyne looks a little something like this. I already named it as ethyne. There you go. It's, a, it's straight across, and we have our triple bond there. So ethyne. We also have some positional isomers. So these are unsaturated hydrocarbons where the multibond can appear in a different position and they cannot occur until butyne. So here's your first one. So this would be a 1-butyne. And there would be your second version of it. It would be a 2-butyne. Again, remembering carbon wants to form four bonds here. So make sure you fill the hydrogens in accordingly. 
Okay, let's take a look at this example here. Uh, there's no hydrogens, which would be wrong. Let's just proceed without it, pretend they are there. So we're going to draw, we're going to find our chain, uh, our multi-bond spot first. So one, two, three, it looks like that'll be lowest. It sure would be three if I went that way, but then these subgroups would end up having nice high numbers. So I'm going to stick with going uh, left, right in terms of my numbering. And in terms of my carbon, I've got a couple of methyl groups off the second carbon. So back to the green here. We've got six in a row. It's in the third spot. It looks like we've got a hex three ein. And then we've got a couple of what would appear to be methyl groups if the H3s were written in. So we have a two, two dimethyl hex three ween. What happens if we get a multi bond example here? Well, same kind of difference as earlier. We still want to number these to either be one, two or two, one. Depends on these groups here. I think my blue numbers should be the best. So we've got uh, five in the ring. So this is going to be a cyclopentine. And then my subgroups, we've got alphabetical, we've got a propyl and a nonyl. So nonyl comes first, four nonyl, and then three propyl cyclopentine. Go ahead and complete worksheets four and five.